Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're watching this. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about the third most haunted castle in England. If you'd like to get straight to today's content, please skip forward this video about a couple of minutes just because I'm going to be talking about why I'm doing this today and what has inspired me to do this. I wanted to start doing YouTube videos for content that was a bit more out of the ordinary just because I have an absolute insane love for anything that's on the horror spectrum. In my day to day life I pretty much live on YouTube, I'm obsessed with the content that other creators make and it just seems so much fun to do. Because I spend literally about 8 hours a day watching YouTube content, it inspired me to want to make it myself. I may be a little bit shaky just because this is my first YouTube video, I'm a little bit nervous um, which seems silly because I'm just talking to a camera but there's something, uh, it makes you a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous about being in front of a camera, I don't know. When I was younger my family, we didn't have a lot of money, we you know couldn't afford big holidays and stuff like that but what my family did decide to do was buy a pass so that every castle in England or every sort of national trust site was available to us so it was a little bit cheaper, it was um, a lot cheaper than going on holiday abroad etc and it was just a nice thing to do but every time I'd gone to these castles, these places, all these places of interest in England I always had this obsession with what else had happened there. A lot of these places would say that they were like a battle fort, you know, somewhere to be secure in terms of war, etc. like that, or they were just really fancy houses that had been owned by really rich people basically of, you know, a time in the past. But I was always fascinated if those people were still around or if there was more things that people weren't saying about the places that I had been to. So I decided the best thing I could do for me, because I love doing this, I think this feels incredibly fun to talk about all these haunted places, was to find the top 25 haunted places in England and do a little video about it. So thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking about the third most haunted castle in England. This castle is called the Berry Pomeroy Castle and it is based in Totnes, I hope I'm saying that correctly, in Devon, which is South West England. This particular castle has been noted as the third most haunted in England due to the fact that at least 30% of all its reviewers have said that they have had a sighting of something supernatural within its grounds. So before we start, I think it's good to do a little bit of background on the castle and how it became to be. The Pomeroys were originally from Normandy and they used the castle as a place of protection from the upcoming raging War of the Roses. Unfortunately in 1547 the Pomeroys fell into a great debt and the only way that they could pay off their debts was to sell their castle. Their castle was bought by Edward Seymour who was the oldest brother of Jane Seymour which if you know a little bit about English history or the Tudors you will know that Jane Seymour was the third wife of Henry VIII. Jane Seymour was the mother of Edward VI who was Henry VIII's only son. Edward Seymour was also known as Lord Protector. He was the guardian of Edward VI, which made him ultimately the ruler of England. So for this next bit, there's quite a lot of Edwards, I think. It was a very common name, and to make it as uncomplicated as possible for all of us, I'm gonna use their full titles when explaining what Edward I'm referring to. For those who know Tudor history, you will know that Edward VI wasn't very well. He also took to the throne when he was nine years old after the death of Henry VIII. Because Edward's health was poor, he unfortunately did die by the age of 15 in 1553, which means he was only in power for six years. Okay, so that's where we stop talking about Edward VI, because unfortunately he did die at an early age, at the age of 15. Going back to Edward Seymour, Edward Seymour was beheaded for treason in 1552, which left Berry Pomeroy Castle to his heir, Edward Seymour. I told you it would get complicated, there's a lot of Edwards in this story. But once we have finished talking about these three Edwards, there is no more Edwards in this story. So to make it easier, the heir of Edward Seymour was called Edward Seymour, second baronet. Edward Seymour, second baronet, came to the castle in 1560. He and his descendants had the absolute ambition to make this castle just stupendous, just absolutely beautiful and rival all the other castles in England basically and although he and his descendants did very well they did turn the castle into a country home and it was absolutely beautiful 
Unfortunately, their grand plans to make this an even more stupendous and beautiful castle had fallen through. Now, there's been no records as to why this castle was never completed. It could have been to do with finances, or it could have been that they just moved on and found somewhere even better to start rebuilding and start working on. But by the 1700s, this castle was completely abandoned. Berry Pomeroy Castle is now protected by the English Heritage Society, and that is really hard to say. I have slipped up on that word about four times now, so hopefully that one was okay. The castle is now a place that is open for tourists. This is where a lot of the sightings have come from, from those people that have been to see the castle. In the next bit of this, I'm gonna be talking about the ghost sightings that have happened within the castle grounds. The castle has two main ghosts that are said to be haunting the castle. The first ghost is the lady called the Blue Lady, and the second is the lady called the White Lady. The Blue Lady is said to haunt the castle because of the loss of a child. And pre-warning, this story is not very nice at all. It does involve the death of a child, so do feel free to skip this forward about a minute, and hopefully you'll miss the incidents of how this story came to be. So the Blue Lady does not have a name, which I think is really, really sad. There is no records of her name, and there is no records of the baby's name either. However, there is a record that the Blue Lady became pregnant with her father's child and suffering the guilt of having a child by her own father, she didn't bond and she didn't love this baby. There has been a record that once the baby was born, she did smother the child because she couldn't live with the guilt of having a baby from her father, which I think is horrific. Um, because she took that blame onto herself. She also therefore murdered her baby because of the actions of her father. There has been other reports that she actually did not murder her own child, but her dad did. Just so that there would never be anything found out as to who the child's real father was, it is told that the father killed his own son. The blue lady has been seen to have been spotted in the castle grounds where she is wandering. She has been seen numerous times by tourists and there is now a spoken folklore that if you follow her it will lead to certain death. By following the blue lady as well it is very likely that you will become lost. If you're within a group you'll be separated from the group and she will lead you to somewhere where you're very likely to fall. Again to certain death. She is deemed as an unkind spirit who brings a very big chill to those that have her around. It is also accompanied by a severe feeling of uneasiness and just pure sadness. So the next ghost that we are talking about is the other very prominent ghost in this castle and her name, she has got a name, but what she's known as is the White Lady. I would argue that this ghost is the most known ghost in the castle, just because there is such a history to it. This ghost is mentioned quite often, and she is actually mentioned on little plaques around the castle, especially when you get to a part of the castle called the Margaret Tower. It is said that in the 15th century, Eleanor Pomeroy had a sister called Margaret Pomeroy. Unfortunately, Eleanor was deeply jealous of her sister's good looks, and they also, unfortunately, both liked the same guy. I'm making that very modernised. They liked the same guy, but they did. Eleanor and Margaret both wanted to be with this man. Eleanor was obsessed with the idea that Margaret would be the chosen one, if you will, because of her immense beauty. Due to being immensely threatened and jealous, Eleanor locked Margaret in this tower. She imprisoned her so she could not obviously get out of the tower and she starved her, which ultimately led to Margaret's death. So this bit was quite hard to find, but I found a small video that toured the castle and it led me to the understanding that you can actually reach Margaret's tower. You can go down a stone staircase, which is very, very steep, and you can sit in Margaret's tower where she was imprisoned. Many tourists have said that once you're down in the tower, it is immensely cold. And when you're on the stairs, you can sometimes feel Margaret brush past you. 
it is said that Margaret appears as a white mist, which gives her the name the White Lady. She doesn't have as much of uh, a presence as the Blue Lady. She has a much more calm, kind, friendly presence, but it is also still filled with immense sadness. So to add to the Blue and the White Ladies, there is also two other ghosts that are said to be haunting the castle. These ghosts are said to be two brothers, and they are said to have been the very last brothers in the Pomeroy line. When Berry Pomeroy Castle was under siege, it was said that their brothers were overrun by attackers. They did not want to die at the hands of the attackers, so they decided to attempt and commit suicide to avoid being held captive, tortured or murdered by their attackers. To do this, they decided to blindfold their horses and get them to charge over the castle's escarpment. Now, there is a bit of folklore about the brothers, and it is said that before they were under siege, they had a treasure and they decided to hide it within the castle grounds, within the kitchen's chimney. Although there has been multiple reports that a treasure has never been found, I do wonder if the brothers are staying there in spiritual form so that they can defend their treasure. Many visitors have reported to have seen the brothers riding horses. They've also said that they can hear horses or hear other animals in the Pomeroy Leap part of the castle. I have a few um, photos that people have taken. Um, it was on TripAdvisor, so I will add them into this just so you can see the sorts of pictures that people have been able to capture from this castle. As most haunted locations go, it is said to not go at night and definitely don't go alone. If you do go with a group, it is urged to not leave your group. Some people that have gone in a group have found themselves leaving the group, maybe because they've seen the blue lady and followed her, or maybe they heard an animal sound and wanted to check it out. But by leaving the group, they have found themselves lost and scared, and it is now urged that if you do go with a group, you do not leave that group. Most people have had their best sightings at night within this castle. So Berry Pomeroy Castle is now an English heritage site and it can be walked around between one and two hours. If you are to visit the site, you can be offered an audio tour. On those audio tour headsets, there is encounters of people that have met the Blue and the White Lady, as well as an in-depth description about the castle grounds itself. The castle has received an overall of a five star review and is open between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. daily. There is no need to book to go to the castle, but if you do book early, it is likely that you'll get a discount. Currently, it's adults of about eight pounds and children up to the age of 17 at five pounds. There is also family discounts and the option for school visits. If you have an English Heritage membership, then of course the ticket price is free. The ruins are still absolutely beautiful to this day. If you do go, you can see things such as the gatehouse where they would have defended from oncoming attackers, the Grand Hall, which was once the most magnificent room of the castle, the first floor of the medieval gatehouse, and of course, Margaret's Tower. There is an on-site cafe and it is dog friendly. It is also very friendly to people who like to take photos as it is located in a woodland valley, which also means very picturesque walks. And if after one to two hours you haven't had your fill, you want to see more castles, you want to see more ruins and go on more walks, then it is situated in a nice location that's actually quite near two other castles. One being Totnes Castle and one being Dartmouth. <laughs> I can't say that. One being Dartmouth Castle. Dartmouth? Dartmouth. I'm sure it's Dartmouth. So that is all from me today. Thank you so much if you are watching this. Thank you so much if you got to the end. I've always wanted to do some sort of content like this just because of my love for spooky, true crime, haunted, anything like that. So if you stick around, that is hopefully what you'll see on this channel. I hope to have a lot more content of a lot more things that just feel interesting to me. I've already written down a few cases of true crime that I would love to investigate and go through. And hopefully there'll be more hauntings as well, more supernatural, anything a little bit macabre. I want to do the whole 25 of most haunted places in England. I guess because I'm English, I just find that more fascinating. But why do the third if we're not gonna do all of them? So if you got to the end, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. 
this is just something that to me is a really fun hobby to do. I've always wanted to do it. So with people watching, it really helps because then hopefully people will tell me what they want to see, what I can cover, and I can do more of this. It just feels immensely fun to me to discuss things that are a little bit spooky, a little bit out of the ordinary. So thank you for being here. Hope I see you again and bye bye for now.